That's not really the reason I read you that thing. Otherwise, you couldn't put a tenant on there and take it off. I tell people it's a better sitting stool, though. Well, let's put a... a uh, But Ann, you guys want me to tell you what I'm doing? Uh, you need a right angle on there. And I'm using, I used to use the serrated jaws. Uh, and I just converted over to the, to the, to the uh, other type of jaws, the smooth jaws. So, top of the stool done. We got 55 minutes here left. <laughs> So now we'll do the uh, bottom of the stool. Of course, we, this is concave. We're going to do a convex here. I think the stool looks better if the top and the bottom kind of go together. So we're, we're not going to measure. And I don't need to bring it up, but we're going to do it anyway. Always turn your lathe off before you move your banjo. You know, nobody said anything about the girl from Harvard that got killed right here. She was a TA working at night in the, uh, by herself, long hair, and got caught in the lathe. And just took her right in and stuff and, and killed her. They didn't find her until the next morning. I'm sure glad it's acceptable today, you know. I, I notice your hair is growing in the morning. In the morning, you know, and especially when you don't have coffee or running water because there's no electricity. Good thing I didn't have to do anything in my hair. And I created a flat spot right here. We'll use that later. Want to make a flat spot there? And since we're going to curve it in here, we want to curve this back a little bit. And I tell people that's so you can't look at it, but it sure helps to, it sure helps to get the drill bit started on a flat surface. And if you curve the bottom side up a little bit, then when you drill the holes in it, it's a perpendicular to your bit, to your bit. So we're going to put a, about a 13 degree slope on there. It would take 10 degrees. <laughs> and how thick should we make it? About like that. I like a, I like to make the thickness of the seat uh, about the same as the diameter of the leg. And I didn't know that. But when you look at a stool, and think, man, it looks kind of off. It kind of looks out of, out of, out of proportion. The thick, a, bit, a thick seat and a thin spindle leg just doesn't go together. So just make this the same, this thickness here, as big as you're going to make the biggest part of your leg. It looks better, I think. What are we doing? The bottom side here, right? We need to get rid of that nut. It's going to cause some problems. I could, uh, I make some of my own tools. Uh, these are just a stainless steel tube with a uh, hose from Home Depot. Get it warm in hot water, put a little dishwashing solution on it, slip it down there and it stays. Got shot filled, really makes a lot of difference. If you're doing a big piece of wood that's 120 pounds and you're doing bam, 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 for a long time, it really affects your joints. So that shot filled helps. I like to have a tool down here on my body. You know, so I can do this. This is long enough to do that. So, what are we doing here? Cut it off. So this is going to be the bottom of our stool. And we want a flat spot on there. Well, it doesn't have to be flat, but it needs to be. This is where we're going to determine what is zero. So, we've got the bottom side there. Almost. We need to make it round, probably, shouldn't we? Probably look better.
You need to look up here, not down here. These big mini turners, you just you can see so much better. Put some legs on it, right? So, where do you want to put the legs? I think probably right about right there is about right. The middle of that leg goes in that hole. The outside of that leg shouldn't protrude out past the seat. <laughs> so that's about right. Okay, so now we get into how do you bore those holes? And there's all kinds of wood turning books out there that tell you to put on a wheel and how to make a jig and all this kind of stuff on how do you bore those holes. But, and I didn't want to, I wanted a, a program that I could do all on the lathe. You know, we all don't have all these other stuff. You know, we got a lathe, you know. So this is how you convert it. And I just made it, welded it on there. You know, it's a piece of angle iron welded on top of a one inch post. And I just cut this. Piece, actually, this is a piece of sycamore. Cut a hole in it. You know, here's your horizontal drilling jig. This is a kind of a different, unique. There's three of these out there. There's a kind of got the set screws on the side, little bitty shaft. They go everywhere. This is a German made one. I can't remember by, is it Fox? Uh, Colt. Colt. There you go. Colt. It's an eighth of a turn twist that locks in there. It's a cam lock system. So you don't have screws and anything to grab on here. I like this. I want to thank Larry for chasing me down and asking me to do this. Uh, it's always, you know, stand in front of your peers and, and do something is kind of scary sometimes. That needs to be in the middle there. And now we're going to get, we don't need this for a minute. I've got a stubby at home, it's what I normally use, and I really like the light. Here's our template, 15 degrees, there's our flat spot, and go here and just line it up, you know, just don't measure anything. <laughs> That's good enough, you know. Oops. And that's kind of at that line. We drill a hole there, and we get the wood in there about like so. We got, we can make a leg there. Okay, so how are we gonna get three? Boy, that's kind of crude, isn't it? This really tears out real bad. I didn't notice that. I've never turned burr off before, but anyway, we can, what you're gonna see today is some concepts. We're not gonna worry about saying it. You know, we're not gonna look what the tool looks like at the beginning, at the end, but. Getting the concept down is all I really want to do today, so you guys can take off and just make stools. Yes, sir. When you hit the handle, it looked like your tool moved. Do you want to check it your did. 15 degrees again, or was I no. mistaken? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I was mistaken. It's off. Yeah. It's like 14.3. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we got a, three legs. How do we do that? This has got an indexing system on it somewhere. Got that? Oh, yeah. And then it's got three screws in here you can put, take your pick on how you want to fit. Well, this is where uh, this comes in here. Somebody can tell me why this works. I don't really care why it works. It just does work. It's a law of jump. It is law of jump, but I don't know which one. It's been too long. Just put this on here. Because my sixth grade teacher said it would work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It works. Just mark off six of your diameters. You know, you don't have to worry about setting up your... Six of your radius. That radius. What did I say, diameter? Yeah, yeah it's a radius. radius of a circle and six of the diameter. Yeah. Then how come the circumference is 3.1416? This equals six. I don't know. Just works. We're just a little off. But that's going to be equal to the mistake I make on the bottom of the last row. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Now you can decide where to put the legs. We made six options. So if you've got some grain that comes down here and you want to put one in the middle and two off the side, you can make that decision here. So, uh, I don't know. I'll take this one here. So that means I've got to take this one and this one. The, the strength, Whoop. The strength come do? into your calculations at some point? So the legs There's a couple <laughs> things. Strength and how about strength? Okay. And you guys can think about that. When we put the legs in here, where do you orient the grain? Think about it, and then we'll talk about that later. I messed up here already. Here's we need to be right in here. You have three extra legs. I know. I could put four on it, couldn't I? <laughs> All six. You wouldn't, wouldn't be happy with your Does anybody know how to put a spindle stop on this? Lock the spindle? Someplace. Yes. We can move it. You can just do it by hand, but it's... Oh, it only locks one place. Yeah, or two. Or two? Yeah, forget it. No, in the wrong place. The wrong place. Yeah. Let's just do it this way. Just before you go out the other side. <laughs> feel it. Just feel it. Don't measure it. Just feel it. <laughs> Go a little bit further. And then mark this. It's kind of neat to have them all the same depth. Okay, so there's one. And here's our second one. I don't know. <laughs> I just put a piece of tape on there, then I just hit it for each, you know, whatever stool it is. Sometimes they're the same. You know, you got to be off a lot to see the difference on a three legged stool. Now you could go ahead and, and and do the you know put it up through the top, cut your wedge, and put your contrasting piece of wood in there. Now if I do that, I wouldn't do the top. I'd hold it down here, do all that, and then finish the top after you get the hole drilled through it. But it's kind of hard to do that in an hour. And you don't be you don't need to be a, an experienced cabinet maker to get that done either. Okay, we got we got stool right. So we can get rid of this, put this over here so we can uh, measure it. Jerry, how did you orient? Huh? How did you orient the holes on it? I didn't. I just did it. I, there's there's not much of a difference in the grain there. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. 